Hey everyone, this is Neha from Edureka and I welcome you all to this session on locators in Selenium. Let's look at the topics to be covered in this session. First, let's understand what Selenium locators are. Next, we will see different types of Selenium locators it's working along with an example. And finally, we will wrap up the session by understanding some best practices that should be carried out for Selenium locators. Now, without any further ado, let's get straight into the module. Locators can be termed as an address that identifies a web element uniquely within the web page. They are the HTML properties of a web element which tells Selenium about what action it needs to perform on the particular web element. And Selenium uses locators to interact with the web elements on the web page. Using the right locator ensures that the tests are faster, more reliable or has lower maintenance over releases. If you're fortunate enough to be working with unique IDs and classes, then you're usually all set. But there will be times when choosing a right locator will become a nightmare. It can be a real challenge to verify that you have the right locators to accomplish whatever task you want to. There is a diverse range of web elements like you have text box, ID, radio button, etc. And identifying these elements have always been a very tricky subject and thus it requires an accurate and effective approach and thereby we can assert that more effective the locator is more stable will be the automation script. Essentially every selenium command requires locators to find the web elements and thus to identify these web elements accurately and precisely we have different types of locators like you have ID name link text CSS selector partial link text and XPath. Now Let's begin and understand how ID locators is being used. ID is the best and most popular method to identify web element. The ID of each element is alleged to be unique. IDs are the safest and fastest locator option and should always be the first choice even when there are multiple choices. It's like an employee number or account number which will be unique. So this is a target format that is ID is equal to ID of the element. Now let's see how to locate a web element using ID locator. Now I will open my Google Chrome and navigate to gmail.com and here you can see there is an email or phone. I'll right click on this and choose inspect. So when I mouse over on this particular script you can see here your email or phone text box is getting highlighted which implies this is the script for this particular email or phone text box. Now you can see here it has an ID attribute whose value is identifier ID, correct? So now we will use this in our Eclipse and try to locate email or phone text box and send keys using ID locator. Now I will open my Eclipse and write a program. So as you can see here I have created a class called locators and inside main method I have launched my Chrome driver. Chrome driver is very important because it will help us to launch Google Chrome and navigate to the output. So this is the location where I have saved my Chrome driver and next using driver.manage I'm deleting all the cookies and maximizing the window and I'm using some timeouts for page load timeout and I'm using implicit wait here as well and next using driver.get I have to give the link of gmail.com. So I'll copy this link and paste it over here. Next, let's use ID locator to locate it. Now, I'll create a web element called username and I will use a method that is element by ID. So here, by is a class name and ID is a locator. So if you inspect this, what was the value of your ID? It is identifier ID. So just copy this and inside the double quotes, paste it over here. Okay, so what's next? So now let's perform some action on it. Now I want to send some values that is I want to enter a username or a email address something. Let's see how to do that. So as I have created a web element called username I'll use that and I'll just say send keys and here I will write email address something like edureka at the gmail.com. Okay, save this. Now let's run the program and check the output. As you can see it got navigated through your gmail.com and entered your email as edureka at the rate gmail.com. Correct? If you click on next it will ask you to enter password. Sounds simple? 
that is you're just launching your gmail.com and using driver dot find element by ID. I'm trying to locate the email or phone text box and I'm sending values called edureka at the rate gmail.com. So this can be done using ID if ID is present as a web element or as an attribute on the particular web page. So one important thing to note here. It is not necessary to create a web element and then send keys and perform action. Instead of using web element, you can just use this. I'll show you how. I'll just comment these two lines. Okay. So you can simply use driver dot find element by ID and your ID value, and you can send the keys. But if you create a web element, you can use it anywhere in the code. It is not restricted to any element as such. Now, if I run this program again, you'll get the same output. So as you can see again, it launched gmail.com and it entered the value whatever you have sent. Correct. So this is all about using IDs. Next, let's see name locator. This is also an efficient way to locate element with name attribute. After IDs, you can give your second preference to name. Name attributes don't have to be unique in the page, but IDs are always unique in the web page. So what happens here? The first element that has the name attribute with value that has a matching to the particular location will be returned. If there is no such element that consists of a name attribute, then a no such element exception will be raised. Let's demonstrate and check how it works. So I'll open my google.com and click on the search bar and choose inspect. So again, if I mouse over on this, the search bar is getting highlighted. So as you can see here, it has a name attribute whose value is Q. So copy this and as you also can see here, there is no ID or there is no any other name attribute as well. Correct. Now let's try to locate the search box and perform some action on the search box using name attribute. There is no much difference here. Instead of by ID, you will make it as name. And I will paste the value that will be Q and say I want to search selenium. Okay. And here what I have to do, I have to copy the Google link. So I'll change this to google.com. And now if I run the program in the search box, selenium will be entered. Okay. So let's run the program and check the output. So Chrome driver launched google.com and it entered the value called selenium. Now you can choose whatever you want. But if you wish to have the search automatically, then you have to carry out one more step. That is click on Google search button and choose inspect. As you can see here, it also has a name attribute whose value is BTNK. So copy that and here you can open the Eclipse and change the value that will be btnk dot as it is a search box you have to use click because you cannot send any values to that because it is a button and not the text box. So by doing this it will give an automated search. Let's see how I'll save this program. Let's run and check the output. So as you can see it entered selenium and the search happened automatically. Okay, but now I want to do something that is I want to give a wait time that is I want to use thread dot sleep for two seconds. Okay. Now what happens first it will launch Google Chrome and enter selenium keys and then it will wait for two seconds and then give your search. Correct. So now let's see whether it happens accordingly or not. So it entered selenium. It waited for two seconds and then it gave your search. Correct. So this is how you can use thread dot sleep method to wait for two seconds and then give the output. So basically this is how you can use your name locator. Now let's see what's next. Next we have link text. This type of locator applies only to hyperlinks and all the hyperlinks on the web page can be identified using link text. The links on the web page can be determined with the help of an anchor tag. The anchor tag is used to create the hyperlinks on the web page. And the text between the opening and closing of an anchor tags constitutes the link text. Now let's see how to use this. Bored of using Google.com, right? So let's use something different now. We'll open Yahoo Mail. So here it comprises of trouble signing in, it has signed in, it has sign up links. So let's investigate trouble signing in. As I have already mentioned, it starts with an anchor tag followed by the href, that is the hyperlink. Okay. So here it consists of a link text called trouble signing in correct. 
but if there is no ID or name attribute in the web element in such cases you can use a method called link text let's see how to use that so instead of name I will change it to link text okay so here you can see it comprise of a link text okay so I'll copy this and I will paste it over here now save this and run the program let's check the output so Chrome driver launched this and you can see here the trouble signing in link got changed to difficulty signing in. So let's inspect this and put the same thing over there. So I'll copy this text only and I'll change it over here. And here I will use link text locator and click it because it is a link and not a text box. So save this and run the program. So now you can see here that is it is asking you for sign in email address or mobile number your recovery phone number or your email address correct so this is how you can use link text if there is no ID or name attribute in the web page and it is only used for hyperlinks now let's move further and understand the CSS locator CSS is mainly used to provide style rules for the web pages and not only that we can also use for identifying one or more elements in the web page using CSS. If you start using CSS selectors you will love the speed when compared with XPath and we can also use CSS selectors to make scripts to run with the same speed in the Internet Explorer browser as well. And CSS selector is the best possible way to locate complex elements in the web page. Now let's navigate through Yahoo login page and use CSS selectors. So I will inspect the same element only as I have told you ID is a unique locator correct and it is unique to the whole web page. So here it comprises of a value called login username. So if I have to locate this text box that is enter your email using CSS locator here only then I'll click on elements press Ctrl F and I will write a CSS selector over here. So remember one thing CSS selector always starts with hash and you have the value of your ID as login username. So as soon as I write login username you can see here it was able to locate the element that is it has highlighted the element and it was able to locate this enter your email box as well. So just copy this value and open your Eclipse and here instead of by link text give it as CSS selector. I'll paste the value of CSS selector that is login username and I will use it over here and as it is a text box I have to change it to send keys because I will be sending an email address okay save this and now I want to do one more thing over here that is I want to click on next button automatically let's see how I will inspect this again and again this has an ID attribute which is unique to the web page that is login sign in I will copy this and paste it over here it was login sign in correct just cross verify it. Yeah, it's login sign in. And as next is a button, I have to use click. And I will use thread dot sleep because after entering a username, I wanted to wait for two seconds and then click on next. Let's see how it works. Run the program. As you can see, it entered adureka at the rate yahoo.com, waited for two seconds and then clicked on next. Here you can enter your password and you can sign in. Correct? Sounds much easier, right? So basically this is how you can use CSS selectors. Now let's move further and see how to locate elements using partial link text. In some situations we have to find the links by the portion of the text that is present in the link text element. In such situations we use partial link text to locate the elements. Let's take same example and try to locate it. So here it contains of difficulty signing in. So I will inspect that. And I will just copy this text. Instead of giving the whole difficulty signing in text, I'll just give it as difficulty. Okay. And I'll change here it to partial link text. Okay. Save this. Let's see what will be the output. Let's see whether it will be able to redirect to difficulty signing in page by using the partial link text method. Yes, it was able to, correct? So this is how you can use partial link text to locate a particular link using a partial value or a partial text in the web page or a partial text in the web page. Correct. 
Now let's move to the last locator that is X path. This is my favorite locator. X path also called as XML path is a language to query XML documents. It consists of a path expression along with some conditions. So let's use Yahoo login page and try to locate it using X path. So I'll just inspect the same element. In case of X path, there are two types. One is absolute and one is relative. In case of absolute, it starts from the root of the document that is from the HTML that where the document has started. But in case of relative X path, we have to simply use double forward slash and it applies anywhere in the document we can find element. So let's see how. So as I told, I'm going to inspect this. I'll start with double forward slash which implies anywhere in the document and you can see here it has an input. So I'll write input. So this is my tag name that is input and now I'll use square brackets and in that I'll use a select attribute that will be my ID. Okay, so ID is my attribute and I have a value for ID that is login username. Correct. So I'll just paste it over here and I have to enclose this login username within single quotes. So on writing this X path, it was able to locate the particular element. Correct. So now I'll copy the same X path and paste it over here. And I have to send keys as well. So I'll send keys called edureka at the rate yahoo.com. And also I will do one more thing that is I'll be using this next button. I will inspect this as well. Again here it has a ID attribute whose value is login sign in. So if I change it over here, you can see it was able to locate the next button. So again, I'll copy this X path and I will paste it in my Eclipse. Save it. Now let's run the program and check the output. So you can see here it entered edureka at the rate yahoo.com, waited for two seconds and then redirect it to your login page. Correct. So this is how you can use XPath. And this is all about the types of locators. Now, what is the preference for the locators? ID is given the first preference because it is unique, even name as well, because it is also considered as a unique locator. So second preference will be for CSS selectors and XPath. And next comes link text. It is useful only for links, so you can give third preference. And partial link text is my fourth preference. Now, Let's see some best practices for locators. Locators are simple and small as possible because you have just a simple locator names like ID, name, text, link text, CSS selectors, XPath, etc. And the locators will still work even after you change the properties of the user interface elements. And also, they work even after you change the properties of the UI elements around the element you target. So, Sounds very simple, right? So it works even if you change the properties of the user interface elements that you target as well. Sounds much simple, right? So that's all for this session. I hope you understood the concept of locators. Thank you and have a nice day. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!